Hey everyone, my name is John Todd, and welcome back to SIS Film Breakdowns. This next episode in our post-draft video series is on former Alabama edge rusher and Rams third-round draft pick Terrell Lewis. He's played in 26 career games, but with only four starts. He showed huge flashes his freshman season before two lost years due to torn elbow and knee ligaments. But in 2019, he worked his way back into the rotation and was able to show his potential when healthy. At the combine, Lewis measured in at six foot five and two eighths, 262 pounds. His wingspan of 83 and 3 8 inches was the second largest amongst edge defenders, and his vertical leap of 37 inches was first in the same group. Length and explosion are two of Lewis's key traits, which we'll dive into further next. We'll be using clips from his 2019 games against Tennessee and LSU, as well as the Senior Bowl. On this first play, Lewis is reduced down as a three technique on a third and six, where Alabama is brought on their dime package. As he slants inside off the snap, the Tennessee right tackle steps with him in a slide left protection. Lewis recognizes this quickly and is able to get his hands up, explode, and extend through contact, knocking the 330 pound lineman off balance easily. His long strides eat up ground quickly, and he closes fast to the quarterback for his first sack of the game. For his second sack of this game, Tennessee is facing another third down passing situation late in a blowout loss. Alabama again sends its dime package on the field, but this time, Lewis lines up in a more traditional edge rusher alignment, again with his hand in the dirt. His jump off the snap is timed perfectly, and he quickly attacks upfield. At contact, he uses the right tackle's aggression against him, narrowing his strike zone and spinning back inside for another sack to close out the game. He tried this spin earlier in the game and his footwork wasn't as tight, but flashing it early set up this move, and he made his adjustments to execute. While those are a couple of different examples of ways Lewis has flashed he can win against the pass, he most frequently uses a stiff arm bull rush around the outside. As we flip from both the sideline and end zone cameras for four snaps through the LSU game, so we can get a chance to see the depth of his rush from the side and a tighter technique from behind, you can first and foremost see Lewis was again consistently the first player off the ball, gaining ground fast and causing stress on their tackles to kick off the line quickly. He fires up field to get the line thinking speed then plants his outside foot and uses his length to explode into his blocker's chest before they can reach out and make contact with him, effectively neutralizing them from the jump. We've shown he has a repertoire, but he really relies on this move heavily, so mixing it up in the future will do him some good. This move and these freaky traits are staples of the top pass rushers in the league though, so it's great to see he has this in his bag already. He showed the ability to drive both of LSU's bookends, including left tackle and fourth round draft pick Sadiq Charles, into the lap of Joe Burrow to get him off platform and uncomfortable, even if he wasn't always able to get home and finish, as we see the missed tackle here. As mentioned earlier, Lewis's combination of length and explosion off the snap and explosion through contact are his best traits, and they allow him to present mismatches and push the pocket, while also setting up blockers for other moves. Consistent pressure is production in its own right, and Lewis forced a lot of it, as we'll discuss next. As we can see in this graphic, once he got a few games under his belt coming back from his ACL injury and had a week six bye to recover, Lewis became a force through the middle part of the 2019 season for the Crimson Tide. He racked up the most pressures in the country over this six week stretch, despite Alabama only playing five games, in large part to a nine pressure performance in that highly anticipated LSU matchup we've just covered. Now, let's switch over to looking at some of Lewis's positives and negatives in the run game. This first play is a second and short from inside the five yard line. Alabama's in their base 3-4 personnel, and Lewis is lined up on the right side of the defense in a two-point stance. Off the snap, Tennessee's tight end fakes blocking him and releases to the second level, keying Lewis to a read option run, where he's the read defender. He puts a hand on the tight end to feel him pass, then quickly moves his eyes to the mesh point, where his responsibility is to keep contain and force a give to the running back. He diagnoses the zone read quickly and is not only able to defend his responsibility outside, but also drives downhill to the ball carrier from a stationary position and explodes through the tackle, keeping the balls out of the end zone. On this next play, Lewis is in a two-point stance on the left side of the defense. LSU is running the ball in their hurry-up offense here against that Alabama dime package, trying to take advantage of the lighter personnel on the field. Lewis is over Thaddeus Moss, who despite going undrafted, was one of the stouter blocking tight ends in this class. 
Off the snap, Lewis flows with the blocking scheme, but Moss does a good job of beating him to the spot and sealing off the inside design. At contact though, Lewis again gets his hands up and extends to pinch the block down, closing off the design gap and forcing a bounce from Clyde Edwards Alaire. As we can see from the end zone angle, Lewis executes a perfect stack and shed as he's able to throw Moss aside with his length and finish through the tackle. This is what he's capable of in the run game with good play diagnosis and upper body explosion. But as we turn to the negative aspects of the run game, he can be exposed if he isn't able to piece together those strikes. We're now in the third quarter of the Tennessee game, with the Falls looking to take the ball in for a score to make it a one possession game. Lewis is lined up as a five technique over the left tackle here, as Tennessee motions the tight end to his side of the line. 49ers draft pick Jawan Jennings is going to take the ball in Wildcat, and we're going to get a zone run to the left toward Lewis. This time, however, he isn't able to stack an extended contact, and his lack of lower body strength allows him to be driven nearly five yards off the line of scrimmage, even without help from the tight end. From the end zone angle, we can see he gets sealed easily one-on-one -on -one and loses outside contain, leaving a wide open run lane for a touchdown that gets called back for holding elsewhere on the play. Some call it sand in his pants, and that lower body bulk is an area Terrell Lewis needs to develop in order to make a more consistent impact in the run game. For this last clip, we're going to take a look at him in the Senior Bowl game. Lewis is lined up as a six technique head up over the tight end on the left side of the defense. We're going to get an off tackle run right at Lewis's seat gap. On this rep, he does not get a good jump off the ball, and fifth round pick Colton McKivitz at right tackle takes advantage and is able to kick out and make first contact, clearing him off the spot and opening a huge running lane. We can see from the end zone angle here, Lewis gets caught off guard and is forced to catch his blocker which negates all of his explosive traits, and he again lacks the anchor strength to sit and stalemate. As you can see here, while Lewis had strong rates against the pass, like his pressure number there, which was actually tied with Chase Young, he has room for improvement against the run. New Rams defensive coordinator Brandon Staley comes from the Vic Fangio coaching tree, which is a great fit for Terrell Lewis. His varied scheme built off of his base 3-4 will allow Lewis to stand up and attack from space and multiple alignments, while also working through a solid rotation, like he did at Alabama, where he only played 53% of snaps last year. He may have fallen some in the draft due to durability concerns that couldn't be fully vetted through the pre-draft process, but if he's fully healthy moving forward, the Rams may have gotten a steal. Thanks for watching SIS Film Breakdowns. Make sure to go get the SIS Football Rookie Handbook for all the answers on who your favorite team drafted. Register for a free trial of the SIS Data Hub for all of these stats and more. And don't forget to tune into the Off the Charts Football Podcast. Until next time, I'm John Todd.